This video on the Ancient Three Kingdoms period of Korean history is brought to you by Squarespace. Whether it is a domain, online store, or personal website, make it with Squarespace. During the Three Kingdoms period of Ancient Korean history, three rival kingdoms, Baekje, Shila, the Kaya Confederation, which is not considered one of the Three Kingdoms, and Kukuryo, dominated the Korean peninsula for hundreds of years, and constantly vied with each other for supremacy through political and military means. Alliances frequently changed between these states, Imperial Chinese dynasties to the west, and the Japanese Kingdom of Wa to the southeast, maintaining an unusually long and hostile, delicate balance of power in the region. In Korea's far ancient past, the peninsula was split between Kujosan in the north and the Jin Confederacy of small city-states and fortified towns in the south. These both fell apart in the late 2nd century BC due to internal infighting and invasions by the Han Chinese. During the 1st century BC, sometimes called the Proto-Three Kingdoms period, the Samhan Confederations, meaning the Great Three, formed in the south. Mahan, Beohan, and Jinhan. Mahan was the largest and most developed of these, and formed out of a coalition of 54 city-states. While Beohan and Jinhan each formed from 12 small states, Baekje and Shila first formed as member kingdoms of the Samhan confederations. To their north, many more independent city-states, tribes, and other large coalitions formed as well. The first of these to form a formidable centralized state was the kingdom of Buyo. And after an internal power struggle, one of its princes fled southwards and began uniting the tribes of the north, and established the kingdom of Kokuryo. The families of allied and conquered tribal chieftains intermarried and were absorbed by Kokuryo's royal family, while foreign relations and military power was centralized behind the king. In a process lasting approximately two to three hundred years, Bekje, Shila, and Kokuryo gradually took over their confederacies and centralized power behind a single monarch. In contrast, the Byonhan Confederacy did not form a single kingdom, but reorganized their 12 small states over time into the six slightly larger states of the Kaya Confederation. As Han China succumbed to internal rebellion, civil war, and decline, Kokuryo took advantage of this by taking territory from them and occasionally raiding further into China, initiating a series of wars where they had the upper hand and then lost it. Their capital city was burnt to the ground. They regrouped, and ended the Chinese military presence that existed in the Leodong and Korean Peninsula for over 400 years. Kukuryo then expanded southwards, and they were well on their way to becoming the only power in the peninsula. When the Xianbei, ancestors of the later Mongols, invaded, Kukuryo's somewhat recently rebuilt capital was burnt to the ground yet again. Many were slaughtered, and an additional 50,000 men and women were taken away and enslaved. Then Baekje, who had recently finished conquering and consolidating all the members of the Mahan Confederation under its rule, decided it was a great time to invade the north and attack Pyongyang. They sacked the city, which was one of the largest and most wealthy in the peninsula, and killed the king of Kukuryo, who was attempting to defend the city. Despite these significant setbacks, Kukuryo was able to find a silver lining to the situation and exploit it. In the north, the kingdom of Buyo and other small states and tribes had been devastated by the Xianbei as well, which allowed Kukuryo to play the role as savior and protector of these devastated peoples, allowing them to effectively unite them all against the Xianbei. In the south, Kukuryo was able to negotiate an alliance with Shila against Baekje, which was the most densely populated of the Korean kingdoms, and they had made it clear that they believed their dynasty had the legitimate right to rule the entire Korean peninsula. During the reign of Kokuryo's most military-capable monarch, Gwangedo, Kokuryo defeated enemies in just about every direction. The north was further consolidated, and any resistance was harshly dealt with. Gwangedo conquered the Baekje capital, located in the same spot as modern-day Seoul, and then a combined invasion force of Baekje, Kaya, and the Japanese kingdom of Wa, who were attempting to conquer Shila, were all defeated and Kukuryo then made its ally Shila a protectorate or vassal state. The Xianbei state of the later Yan believed Guan Gedo was too tied up in the south to effectively defend the north and invaded. They were severely mistaken. Guan Gedo returned, defeated them, and invaded the later Yan and took most of their territory. The remainder of his reign was spent bouncing between north and south. He repelled a major invasion from the kingdom of Wa, and then campaigned far in the north, conquering territory in what is now China, Russia, and Inner Mongolia, 
the Xianbei heartland, where he built fortified military outposts to keep the nomads in line. During Guanghetto's reign, he conquered 64 walled cities and over 1,400 towns and villages. In one of his campaigns, he claims to have destroyed three tribes of the nomadic Catan, which consisted of five to six hundred encampments. Guanghetto bestowed upon himself a title equivalent to the Emperor of China. His eventful reign was relatively short, especially when compared to that of his son, Zheng Su, who succeeded him, and reigned for 79 years, till the age of 98, making him the longest reigning monarch in East Asian history. At this point, Sheila regretted the alliance it had made with Kukuryo, so it switched sides and formed an alliance with Baekje to drive Kukuryo out of the Korean peninsula, which didn't work at all, and both states lost territory. In 475, Baekje was defeated and their king was captured and executed by Kukuryo, and with 90% of the peninsula taken, it seemed it would only be a short matter of time before all of it was united by them. In 427, Jiang Su had moved the capital to Pyongyang. The large city grew much larger and became the center of Kukuryo's golden age, of economic prosperity and cultural development. However, after Jiang Su's long reign, all of this wealth became the motivation for internal infighting. Brother murdered brother, and all the aristocratic factions began competing with each other over prestige and revenue streams. This allowed Baekje and Sheila to thrive and grow in power and influence in the South. During this time, the Kai Confederation had been weakened by attacks from Baekje. Sheila bided their time, and then attacked to the weakened state, taking their capital in 532, and by 562, they had conquered the whole territory. Baekje and Sheila's over-century-long alliance came to a sudden end, when Sheila unexpectedly attacked Baekje, and took some of its territory. Their king unsuccessfully counterattacked with an army of 30,000 men, and was killed in battle. Meanwhile, Kokuryo managed to put their internal infighting and factionalism behind them, and internally united again. Sui Dynasty China, perhaps not realizing this, decided it was a great time to attack, and invaded with a massive army, and embarked on several costly and disastrous campaigns, most notably at the Battle of Salsu River, which had been dammed up drastically decreasing the water level. As the army was halfway through the shallow river, the dam was broken and thousands drowned. Kokuryo's army then moved in to finish off the disorganized and shock survivors. The Sui lost as many as 300,000 men in the battle, which greatly deteriorated their prestige. They were plagued by internal rebellion and the Sui emperor was assassinated and were replaced by the Tang dynasty. Kokuryo then built a 300-mile wall to deter any future invasions, which it did not. A little over a decade after the wall was built, the Chinese invaded by land and sea. This invasion was repulsed. The Tang Dynasty then took a different approach. Kokuryo and Baekje had formed an alliance against Shila, so the Tang made an alliance with Shila against Baekje. A force of 120,000 men was sent by sea to aid in the conquest of Baekje, who unsuccessfully appealed to the Japanese for help. Baekje was conquered and their last king was taken back to China as a hostage. Kukuryo was then attacked on multiple fronts, and their capital was conquered in 668, ending their state. The Chinese withdrew and the peninsula was unified under Shila. Before I continue with the aftermath and the rebirth of the later Three Kingdoms period of Korea, I would like to take a brief moment to thank this video's sponsor, Squarespace. Whether it is podcasting, a personal website, or online store, Squarespace has the easy-to-use tools to support your creativity, including loads of customizable design templates, seamless blogging, podcast, and social media integration and support, access to a vast library of high-quality Yeti images, email campaigns and mailing lists are easy to set up, so you can keep in touch with your customers or community. And with integrated analytics, you can quickly find all the important stats for your website. With all of this in mind, I highly recommend you use Squarespace for whatever kind of website you can think of. Whether it's for school, work, or just for fun, check out squarespace.com and register for a free trial using squarespace.com forward slash Epimetheus. When you're ready to launch the website you created, Use offer code Epimetheus to get a 10% discount on your first website or domain purchase. The later Sheila, or the period of unified Sheila, was initially a very peaceful period, where good relations were maintained with Tang China, and no foreign invasions occurred for 200 years. The economy prospered, and Sheila became the hub of foreign trade routes, stretching as far as the Middle East. Sheila attempted to assimilate the populations of the other kingdoms in a program called 
the unification of the Great Three. But over time, there was a great level of resistance to this, and rebellions became more frequent, culminating in the emergence of two rebel kingdoms that took the names Koryo and Bekje in homage of the earlier states. This short and chaotic period ended with Koryo reunifying the peninsula into a single state. Koryo is the source for the modern exonym of Korea. This has been Epimetheus. Big thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. Let me know what you think about the Three Kingdoms period of Korean history down in the comments as I really enjoy reading what you guys have to say.